So what would happen if you took head of the class, Colby's Clubhouse, Julie Brown, Bible Man, and Miss Velma's Christmas, and stuck all of them into a blender? I'll tell you what would happen. You'd ruin the fuck out of that blender! But then again, you may magically get something like the 1985 live stage musical High Tops. High Tops is the brainchild of Christian singer-songwriters Debbie Kerner and Eddie Rotino, who are also the creators of Salty the Singing Songbook from the Kids' Praise albums. And they're also the creators of Solomon the Supersonic Salamander. That was also the worst Sonic knockoff game of the 90s. High Tops was their nationally toured stage production, and this 1985 recording is evidence that it happened. The musical is about Angel sent to Earth to experience peer pressure with a group of, let's say, teenagers, but not if that big bad Satan can stop it. If you ask me, the musical and the band at the center of it are simply the result of snorting a lot of blow off a pair of shoes. So let's rap about peer pressure, kids, cause if the devil shows up to give you advice, mark my words, it ain't gonna be very nice. The opening doesn't even need sound to convince you that popping lewds beforehand is a great idea. That's a lot of words for my body is ready. Ladies and gentlemen, we now present High Tops. I've been saying for years that the tabernacle from Zardoz needed its own musical. Although I could have done without the group of 30 year olds playing kids. Hey, where are you going? To the cockroach, you know? Oh no, I forgot. Well, you better hurry. You gotta get a date. No problem. What looks like this? While they did some funny movie parodies, Mad TV's original characters were really annoying. Cell phones were a lot different in the 80s. You had to hook them up directly to your dick. Is it party time? Why don't we go to the concert together, Tony? We can discuss it later at my house. My parents are gone again for the weekend. That's because your parents live in a retirement community. I'm struggling to find the gist here. Okay, okay, fine. I'll pick you up in a few okay, minutes. Okay, bye. All right, Hey, bye. new concert's going on. Just, could you tell me what concert's happening to... Pardon me for asking, but... Yes? What group is playing tonight? My Tops! You can't just say a bunch of random words and expect it to all come together just because you end it with the show's title. Fluffernutters, corkscrews, Gatorade, boom, cinema snob! I had some reservations about the live TV adaptation of The Wiz, but after the song Ease On Down the Cocaine Addiction, I'm sold. The hell are they singing about here? He's the father of lies. Who lights up the night? Excellent musical tribute to Gary Newman. Oh yeah, and throughout the whole thing, you can hear the audience and their easily entertained reactions. Okay, if that causes spontaneous applause, wait till you see this. Come on! Everyone in that audience then died of a massive heart attack. They're singing about distancing themselves from that armored angel of God. And if they blink, they'll be sent back to medieval times. And by the tone of this, I mean an actual medieval times restaurant. And then they put that giant mushroom on her head onto the world's largest pizza. I guess this is Satan, or is he called something stupid? Hope you don't mind my interrupting here. Oh, the name's Louie! <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Ugh, audience on loan from America's funniest home videos. 
while the guitar-wielding driller killer from Slumber Party Massacre 2 tells us about apples, the background dancers are presenting for whatever reason. Nah, they got a couple of halos flying around this joint trying to dust me! Hey, Buster. I thought we told you to get off the premises. Least intimidating RoboCop ever! And now Howie Mandel impresses the crowd with a rubber glove on his head. This is called the fight song. <laughs> Fight song comes complete with visual effects that the people in the audience can't see. I'm gonna lift up my sword and shield. I'm gonna stand up and sing. Praise the God and my King until all of my energy. <laughs> this isn't my fight song. This is the band High Tops singing their hit song, She Blinded Me with Creationism. Somebody asked me before the show. Why we call ourselves high tops? Because when you were called the Converse, you were about to get sued. I'm way more concerned about this guy's breathing. Is he about to die? See, we're going for God's best for us, and we're not settling for anything less. We see it like, like everybody's on the run. <sighs> the original name for the group was Jesus Christ, take a fucking breath! We find out that they're holding auditions for new band members. I think I have a sneak peek at some of those auditions. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. Mm, nope, sorry, too straight. The cast is all excited to audition. You idiots, you're already part of the show. I'm going to that audition and trying out. Their music was hot. Their music was hot, but those shoes, they look like rejects from the Globetrotters. <laughs> Damn, John Travolta really did have a tough go in the 80s. <laughs> Remember when High Tops was a realistic look at a blue-collar family, and now it's just this fucking nerd building time machines? As a matter of fact, I've got a zit growing right here. <laughs> oh, it's a headless monster. It's going to get super rapey when he dresses like Stan Gable to seduce Betty. And thanks again, audience, for telling me how I should feel. Yeah, you see, I'm trying to develop personal charm, but I don't seem to be getting anywhere with that. Ew, <laughs> God, I would love for this audience to be at a cannibal holocaust screening. If the band is looking for someone molestery as fuck, I'd say this group has a shot. Yeah. <laughs> There's still 90 minutes of this left. That's right, it's movie length. Ooh, a high top sale, which is bullshit because it comes with only one shoe. This really seems familiar. Not nearly enough cardboard. Ugh, I will never forgive Chris Columbus for what he did to rent. What? Meanwhile, in the opening scene from Two of a Kind... Humans are amazing, Grace! Just look at the stacks of laser memory tubes on the subject of fads. Well, that's just great. This is my 50th VCR to commit suicide. The group of angels are talking about something they shouldn't be talking about. Fashion. This show is very it never wears out. But then nothing ever wears out up here. I guarantee you the albino Commodore's look was never in. But on to the main topic. Peer pressure. Peer pressure? <laughs> what do you suppose that is? Peer pressure is when you dress up like Pam Greer crossed with a bag of gummy bears just because your friends are doing it. This summons Gabriel the angel. The peer pressure has a lot to do with the way humans feel about themselves. Being afraid of rejection, afraid of failure. Well, it also has to do with needing to feel loved and accepted. That's not Gabriel. That's the Sea King from Fun in Balloon Land. Hide your children! The angels are sent on a fact-finding mission to, uh, find a dictionary. Are we being drafted? Well, you might look at it that way, Lil. God, I hope these characters end up in Nam. Actually, he's sending the angels off so he can have a lemon party with Merlin and Wizard Whitebeard. And what the fuck is Lucifer doing there? The devil has nothing better to do than to fuck with these angels who are sent to find out about peer pressure? You ain't seen the last of me, toits. 
<laughs> Laughs are cheap. This Satan is going for gasps. Wait a minute, that's a wig! But unfortunately, in order to go to Earth, they must give up their wings. You're going to de-wing us? You mean like, what mean little boys in a box? <laughs> It's funny because he's sadistic. Why isn't he with Satan? Ah, perfect. Now you're dressed like the fifth dimension had sex with the Soggies from Captain Crunch. You are to be known as Lily from the Valley. <laughs> oh, wow. like, this is totally awesome. Like, got me the fart. Holy shit, it's Christian recording artist Crystal Lewis. Thanks, Wikipedia. But that means this is the roundhouse! And you will be a librarian fetish, and you, my boy, are to become a rejected cast member from Earth Girls Are Easy. Now try to blend in. Put for life on endless trends. In my door dash. I'm accepted. With no label! Mm, yes, the forgotten 80s group, a flock of assholes. This would cause even Wham to wear a shirt that says, Choose Death. You know what this needs? Focus. And a box of downers. Do I walk right? Talk right. Is everything I'm wearing right? How about my hair? Is it long enough? Short enough? Is the color green enough? Denton Vale. While I appreciate Llewellyn Sinclair directing another musical after O Streetcar, I'm not sold on this adaptation of The Killing Fields. I have no idea what this song is about, so I'm going to assume it's about a random box of props. This is pretty sucky for people who created a character that's literally named Melody. Each costume represents a different theme night at the local gay club. They may not believe in aliens, but I guess they believe in Coneheads. No, you're not. Oh, are they still talking about high tops? I haven't gotten the point yet. But you know my dad. He'd have a conniption. So I got purple. Oh. Sequins. <laughs> His dad loves his gay son. This production is exactly why Ritalin was invented. I don't know you. Why are you getting a monologue? Well, no offense, Twin Fin, but, you know, his dad is really kind of the Archie Bunker type. Well, when I told him I was auditioning for a performing group, he said, Tony, you mean like a dancing and a singing, a stuff like that? Ah, uh, yes, Archie Bunker, the most embarrassing of Italian stereotypes. This character looks as Italian as Richie Cunningham. Let's check in with our angels. I'm like, already I've cut, you know, like this cold? Ugh. I'm like, why didn't they tell me when I signed up for this gig I was going to get sick? Perfect. In mere hours, she caught hepatitis C. You can thank Gabriel for not giving her the safe 80s sex talk. Diseases are, like, totally weird. Like, this cold is grossing me out. I think that was the 80s outlook towards AIDS. It's totally weird. Peer pressure must be why she decided to wear anal beads around her neck. Ah, uh, what do you know? The angels found the teenagers. <laughs> what are the odds? It's not like they all hang out in the same location. Now for some guy time. Oh, cool. Hey. Okay. <laughs> and then they're off to the steam room. After this, I'm swearing off both high tops and reruns of Kids Incorporated. One thing is for sure, Mean Girls 3 is terrible. I'm probably the only person in the world that'll tell you the truth about yourself. You're ugly, you have no talent, and you should stop using transmission fluid for a deodorant. But all that means nothing now that Melvin has turned into the Toxic Avenger. Stupid nerd in his stupid nerd face. He makes my skin crawl. If you ask me, I think they should have a special school for people like that. They do. It's called college. You should look into it. 
This monologue is long enough for Beelza Rape to pop up behind her. Louie invites her to come with him to watch Linnea Quigley strip naked in a cemetery. They have to quickly cut away before showing this person in the audience get up to do literally anything else. Uh-oh, none of them studied for the big test. Don't worry, they can cheat. <laughs> you mean we're gonna cheat? Hey, I know I'm not Miss Goody Two-Shoes, but cheating? Look, you've been a senior for 15 years now. What's a 16th year gonna hurt? Hang on, what's with those lights? Wait a minute, this is on a stage! Just a little bit, you get back. Just a little bit, you get back now. So I should cheat? Thanks for the lesson, movie. You've shown me that cheating is both fun and catchy like the Valley Girl's gonorrhea. And now time for that big test where they cheat. I'll be leaving the room for a few minutes and I'll trust you all to behave appropriately. Ready, begin. Shh, you're trying to get yourself caught? Perhaps you should sing about subtlety. Heather, you can turn your paper right now. But Mr. Quirk, it was a- Any talking results in an automatic F, Heather. I don't know what's worse, the fact that they're surprised that they're caught, or that the teacher thought it was only one of them singing and cheating. But the valley girl has some advice. She's probably packed with fears, hurts, and insecurities that are like really deep or something. And she's trying to put band-aids on her by being so nasty. <laughs> you make Kimberly Ann Hart sound like the Dalai Lama. Ah, uh, good, they're turning the set around. It looks totally different now. It's easy for the angels to fit in when everyone acts like an alien. I'm beginning to understand what this, this peer pressure stuff's all about. She learns the lesson that she doesn't have to become Catwoman once Max Shrek pushes her out a window. This school's smart. They put the only two nerds' lockers right next to each other. <laughs> Isn't she gorgeous? I'll bet if you take those glasses off, she'd easily become the prom queen. <laughs> I'll take that bet. I love you. I love you. <laughs> That's a laughter that suggests that the audience is laughing, not because it's good. Let's now cut to a live shot of the audience. Mmm, <laughs> sweet relief. And then they went on to give birth to a baby that's half person and half leatherneck sea turtle. Don't let that break fool you if the sequence isn't over yet. They have lots more time to embarrass themselves. And two lumps aren't better than one, that's what I always say. <laughs> <laughs> and then Lambda 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 lost the homecoming competition and the Alpha Betas killed them. Well, what's your name? Grace? But, but you can call me Klotz! <laughs> it's not that I want them to fall into toxic chemicals so that they can turn into superheroes. It's that I want them to fall into toxic chemicals so that they'll melt. Uh-oh, looks like someone's busted for having weed in their locker. Twist it! It's too blowing! It's gonna take him to the whole school! Save me! Or Superman when you need him. I know exactly where Superman is. He's off humiliating himself in another musical. Don't they know the strongest man can cry? I think your plant is having an epileptic seizure. Anyway, enough of that. How about some love advice? Twinfin, what do you think about sex? You know, before marriage. Uh, to tell the truth, Tony, I don't think about it. Yeah, if the guy with the twiddle bird's taint on his head can't tell you about girls, then who the hell will? Any jerk can take advantage of a girl. What? But the real trick is to love them the way God would love them. 
Yes, but this angel worships the god of Randy from Valley Girl, which will get you laid far more than High Tops will. Oh, and are the lewds kicking in yet? Hello, I'm Dr. Cosme McKinley. I'd like to tell you about a new film from the gang that gave you the Rocky Horror Show. If not, give it some time. How about that peer pressure, right? Like, totally, as if, for sure. It's all in the need to feel like you're part of the group. Oh, bag it, I'm not kidding, barf me out. The world's only girl whose brain is held in place by a slap bracelet. And then they become an Atari game, which no one buys. Tony proposes to Heather because he's got to get laid somehow. She rejects him, though, because she later marries the actor who plays the nerd, and their family ends up becoming contestants on the Ray Combs edition of Family Feud. I'm being serious. But she has her reasons for not wanting sex. I don't want to end up like Mary Lou Palmer. She's 16 years old, she has a baby, and she's stuck in one of those homes for, for unwed mothers. Yes, but that girl got pregnant because she used a piece of tin foil as protection. You can thank High Tops for that. Now time for the I'm Not Putting Out song. It's kind of a Christian counterpart to Do It For Our Country from Grease 2. So anal sex only. Got it. This is the same dance that everyone does when they come to the realization that they'll remain virgins until they're 30. Ooh, high quality video effects. Or did someone blow their bubblicious onto the lens? Eh, the Game Boy tie-in game was okay, but it would have been better if there were a hand job button. And now the parents get to explain to the kids in the audience what a cold shower is. Go take a cold shower. Don't need to. I cut my dick off halfway through this song. On to the other love story. Grace tells nerdy McSlide Rulerstein that she's an angel. There's no law that says a cave woman angel from heaven can't become prom queen. More importantly, she gives Norman the confidence he needs to audition to be in the band High Tops. In other words, she's the bad angel. You've got your own special gifts. You're a very talented person, Norman J. Pitts. Don't you dare skip that audition. I know you can make it. And then he fails. Ginny, however, needs some drugs to help her out. I know what's in that bottle. It's a reference to a special episode of Saved by the Bell. She's worried that Heather is going to beat her out for her role as a candy cane hanging from a tree. Good, the auditions are finally here. Time to point and laugh. <laughs> That's not bad. Well, on the bright side, at least he can have sex before marriage. I got a good feeling about these kids. I wanna be in the band. I need to be in the band. I gotta be in the band, mister. You're out of the band! But not everyone can be good enough to be below adequate. Oh, holy night! The stars are brightly shining! <laughs> what are you acting so shocked for? She's one of the best singers yet. Singing competitions were really lame without angry judges to call the bad contestants talentless whores. Now for the next audition, it's Keith from The Pretender! If I ever come to Jesus, I come all the way. Again, too straight. So many people eager to join this band and commit career suicide. It's exciting and being in a group like this makes you popular and popularity is everything! Those two sentences just blatantly contradicted themselves. Okay, you're all terrible, so the first person to confuse me for Scott Bayo is in the band. God has created you as unique individuals with different talents and abilities. We're looking for kids with a particular sound. God damn it! So much for my 51st VCR! It's the first ever production that was choreographed by a drunk guy dodging bullets from a sniper. And then the song finishes out with the worst human pyramid I've ever seen. 
<sighs> Thankfully, these auditions went by without being needlessly dramatic. Nobody knows what it's like to be... No. Like it really matters. They all make it into the band. I don't know why there were even auditions to begin with. I can't believe it. I'm going to be in the band. Congratulations. Your career is over. Now that Jenny's in the band, she definitely needs to be on drugs and alcohol. What do you think fueled the making of High Tops? After Heather and Ginny argue like they're also auditioning for a Dynasty stage production, the leader of the High Tops finds out that Ginny told Heather the wrong audition time so that she'd fail, which results in Ginny being fired, as if the High Tops have fucking standards now. We all know where this is going. All right, Louie, give me your pills and start pouring. <laughs> she was gonna do that regardless of being dropped from the band. And the lesson here is, if you get caught doing something bad, do drugs and binge drink! So here's to the me I never was. Stop trying to win a Tony! Damn, Ginny's a lightweight. I've never seen someone get this drunk off of Diet Shasta. And then Ginny dies. Hey, how many of these did she take, Louie? Go call the paramedics quick! I'm not joking. Ginny's fucking dead. Good thing the angels are there to help out. I mean, they help them get into a shitty band. Why not help a dead person? She hopes she doesn't put drugs and alcohol. Oh no, Ginny, somebody do something. Ginny, oh, Ginny. I don't feel any pulse. I want to be in the band. I need to be in the band. I got to be in the band. Luckily, she doesn't stay dead. She's brought back through the power of cheese. You hear that, kids? If you find someone who's OD'd, they'll instantly be brought back to life with the help of shitty in-camera effects. Given how long Ginny's been brain dead, she's lucky she didn't wake up sounding like the Valley Girl. But enough about Ginny being dead for several minutes. The real story is with Horny Tony. Heather, I'm sorry. I'm such a jerk. That's okay, Tony. How about we start all over again? So long as I can still get a blowjob in the back of my 81 Honda. Thus, this tale of forgiveness and surviving against peer pressure has come to an end. When you open your heart and let Jesus in, you'll see things different. Why is this not the end? I don't know about Ginny's look here. She still seems to have utter contempt for all of them. So glad the angels were there to help with an audition in which there were no losers, then tell Tony about waiting for sex when he was with a girl who didn't want it to begin with, and to watch someone be brought back to life without interfering. I'm waiting for Nathaniel the Grublet to show up to chastise them for stealing their set from Starlight Express. Is this the end? Finally, them all holding hands, but totally not in a gay way. Kiss her, kiss her, kiss her, ow. Well, angels, did you learn anything? Well, they haven't learned to end a fucking play. They even brought some high tops to heaven with them. Not that it matters, because they live in a place where fog covers the floor. So, it's over now, right? Oh, well, we can't miss the encore, I guess. Let's give it up for no one. 18 hours later. Can I go home now? I'm burning all of my shoes for fear that someone will compliment my high tops. This whole production feels like your parents showing up to make the 80s seem less cool. But as a movie adaptation for the cover to the anticipation game, I guess it's serviceable. 
If you want your own copy of High Tops, don't worry, it's widely available in a cover that suggests that Cindy Lauper was raptured. At least now I know what goes on inside of my cousin's Polly Pocket toy. I had no idea that a melted box of crayons sitting in my front yard were so religious. We've all learned a valuable lesson in this musical March and September episode. If you want to win an audition and survive a drug overdose, angels aren't going to help you. But if you want to get high as fuck while watching an 80s stage production, then you best get the cocaine because I'm about to shotgun a jolt cola. I want to make lifelong decisions with my brains, not my hormones. <laughs> I wanna be in the band, I need to be in the band I gotta be in the band, mister I gotta need to be, I gotta dream to be I wanna be in the band Hello, my name Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash stonedgremlinproductions Follow us on Twitter at The Cinema Snob or check out our homepage at thecinemasnob.com.